from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Norse law has remained unchanged for 10,000 years. And yet you seek to change it today over my dead body! <laughs> Norse law states that every Viking must eat the food of the gods. Fala far is no food of the gods! No. It's pronounced falafel! Falafel! is not even meat. Have you never tried one? It's delicious! And the tahini sauce, it literally melts in your mouth. I only trust what I can kill. You don't need to kill the falafel. It's vegan. What did you call me? Magnus Chase, son of Frey, eats falafel every day. And we know this. Are told in the shiny balls. Oh, shiny balls. Now, who here dares defy the words of Magnus Chase? Well, awful is cool. I ate some yeah. last night. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, Book Three: The Ship of the Dead, from Rick Riordan. Uh -huh. yeah, this is delicious. Uh -huh. Bandits gluten free. <laughs> what did you call me? Oh, oh, you're the gluten. Oh. Mr. Rick Riordan. <laughs> hey, everybody. Wow. Well, that was something. I don't know about you guys. I'm hungry for falafel now. Anybody else? Wow, it is fantastic to be here. Do we have a clicker up here for the little thingy bobber? Yeah. Oh, thank you. What happened to your hair? Yeah. Well, it's great to be back. It's wonderful. Thanks to everybody for coming out. Are you guys missing class for this? Yes. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> what a terrible thing. So. So I should try to talk really, really fast to get you guys back as soon as possible? No? Okay, whatever. Well, it's great to be here, and as you heard in the introduction, I was a teacher for many years, so I always like field trips, and I'm glad you guys could join me today. I was thinking backstage, it has been 40 years since I started writing. Can you believe that? I am, I am 53 now, which I can't believe, but I started writing when I was 13. I was in eighth grade, and I wrote this story for my English teacher about this guy who dies, and he goes into the afterlife. It was like a fantasy story. My teacher read it, and she said, Rick, this is really good. Why don't we see if we can get it published? And I was like, you can do that? Like, I, hadn't, I didn't know how you got things published. This was before the internet. We didn't have fan fiction. We didn't have Wattpad. We didn't have social media. If you wanted to get something published, you just kind of had to send it to a magazine or a publisher in New York and, and hope they liked it. So we sent off this story. I was so excited. And finally, after about six weeks, I got back a rejection. And that was only the first rejection. I kept writing, I kept writing, and I got rejected for everything I put in. It wasn't until I was 30 years old that I finally got published. I wrote a novel for adults called Big Red Tequila. It was a murder mystery. I, I was teaching middle school at the time. I don't think that's why I was contemplating murder, but I'm not sure. Um, but I sent it off and it got published. But even after that, I was still teaching for another 10 years, and I loved teaching. I didn't mind that. But I was writing books and teaching at the same time. It wasn't until my son was in second grade and having trouble in school, and I started telling him Greek myths for bedtime stories, that I started thinking, hey, you know what? I teach kids. I write books. Why don't I put the two things together? And it finally made sense to me. And out of those stories about Greek mythology came the story of Percy Jackson. 
my very first book, The Lightning Thief, which I hear some of you guys have read. And the question was pretty simple. What would you do if you found out that your real mom or your real dad was a Greek god? Yeah, I see the wheels spinning, right? You're thinking about it. Uh huh. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Would anybody have a favorite Greek god? Who would you like as your mom or dad? Let me see some hands. Who would you choose? Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Aphrodite had a magical belt, and she could make any guy fall in love with her like that. That'd be cool. I'm sure that's not why you'd want to be the child, but, but that's a pretty cool power. Yeah, who would you like as a mom or a dad? Zeus, the god of the sky. If anybody bothered you, you could be like, hey, dad, this guy right here, boom, <laughs> lightning, not bad. Over here, yes, Artemis, ah, the huntress. She would be really cool. You'd be great at bows and arrows, and you could live outside all the time. Of course, Artemis said she would never have kids, but yeah, you know, you should, maybe you could be adopted or something. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. My favorite answer, I was at a school one time, and I said, okay, who would you like as a god if you had a mom or a dad as a god? Kid raised his hand and said, Batman! I was like, yes, excellent answer. All right, well, anyway, hands down. That was Percy Jackson. I wrote five books about Percy, and I loved it, and I thought I was pretty much done with Greek mythology. But the thing about myths and stories is the more you read, the more you find. So I kept finding more stories, and so I kept, yes, you've got the first book right there. I started the Heroes of Olympus series, and the first book was The Lost Hero. Five more of those, and now I've written, like, yeah, it's about 20 books for kids. That's crazy. And today, the weird thing is, after all of these years, from the time I was 13, and I wrote that story about a guy who dies and goes into the afterlife, I'm here with you today to tell you about the newest book, which is about who, a guy who dies and goes into the afterlife. Magnus Chase. The Vikings believed that if you died a hero with a sword or some other weapon in your hand, doing what was right and defending your friends and being courageous, being a hero, if you died like that, you would go to Valhalla, which was like paradise for warriors. You would be one of Odin's chosen, the Einherji, the lone warriors. And you would be indestructible almost. You would fight with Odin on Ragnarok, the day of doom. Well, Magnus Chase is a kid living on the streets of Boston. One day, he finds this magical sword, defends a bunch of people from this monster, and in the very first chapter, Magnus dies. And he wakes up, and he's in Valhalla. He's a modern Einherja, one of Odin's warriors, which is pretty cool, except if he ever goes outside of Valhalla and goes on, like, adventures, he can die out there. But if he's in Valhalla, he can't die. They can go around Valhalla, they have swords, they're cutting each other's heads off, and they just get right back up again. They have a big battle every day, everybody goes out, and it's like a game of freeze tag, or it's like a game of dodgeball, except with swords. And it doesn't matter how many times you die, the next morning you'll just wake up in your, in your bed and you're totally fine. Do not try this at home, okay? This is only in Valhalla. Anyway, Magnus Chase, what can I tell you about the newest book? Well, since there are nine worlds in Norse mythology, we are going on nine different adventures. You guys are the very first ones. We're starting with you in DC, and then we're going all across the country to different places. Eight cities in eight days from here. It's gonna be a lot of fun. In the newest book, The Ship of the Dead, Magnus has a little problem. Are you familiar with Loki? You've seen the Thor movies? Yeah, that's not exactly how he is in mythology, but he is a pretty, pretty clever, tricky villain. Well, Loki was punished in Norse mythology. When the gods got mad at him because he killed this other god, and gods can die in Norse mythology, they took Loki and they tied him down in a cave, like spread eagle, like this on the floor for all eternity. But that wasn't gross enough. They didn't just tie him down with chains. The gods turned Loki's two favorite sons into wolves and made them fight each other to the death. And then they took the entrails, the intestines. Oh, I'm sorry, did you guys eat before you came? They took the intestines of Loki's sons and made magical chains and chained him down with those. 
But even that wasn't gross enough. They took a big stone pillar and put it by his head, and they took a giant serpent and wound it around the pillar. And the serpent, all day long, for all eternity, would drip poison into Loki's eyes. Can you imagine what that would feel like? The only, the only help he had, his wife, the goddess Sijin, she had a bowl, and she would kneel at Loki's side and collect the acid in a cup. But every once in a while, she would have to empty the cup. So she would turn to empty it. And during that time, the acid would fall in Loki's eyes, and Loki would, would writhe and scream. Aah! And that's why the Vikings thought earthquakes happened. It was Loki in his chains under the mountain doing that. Well, in this book, The Ship of the Dead, Loki has escaped. He is finally out, and you can imagine he's not real happy. He has gone to find the ship of the dead, which is the boat that he will take to sail to doomsday, the final battle, when all nine worlds burn and the gods will die. It's a really happy time. <laughs> this ship of the dead is made, it's called the ship of nails, and that's not because it has a bunch of nails hammered in it. We're talking toenails and fingernails. The entire ship, big enough for a million warriors, is cobbled together from the toenails and fingernails of all the dead warriors from all time. How gross is that? And that's why the Vikings believed that when you died, you better get somebody to trim your nails. Because if you died with long nails, you were contributing to the ship of the dead. So that's what Magnus has in store for him, a whole bunch of toenails and a really angry guy. He's got to go on a big, uh, this big journey to try to find out where Loki is to stop him before he can start Doomsday. Some of the characters that you will learn more about if you've read the series already, you may remember Hearthstone the Elf. He is the MVE, the most valuable elf. He is from Alfheim, the world of the elves. And a few things that are really cool about Hearthstone. Uh, he's deaf. He uses sign language. But he also is an amazing rune magician. He can take these rune stones and make different things happen simply by throwing them into the air. Like one rune stone will create a horse that has eight legs and can ride through the air. Another rune stone will create a barrier of ice that no one can get through. And he's got 27 different rune stones. So he's got a lot of things literally in his bag. You'll find out a little bit more about him. Thomas Jefferson Jr. He lives in Valhalla. He died a hero, but he died in 1863. He was a member of the 54th Massachusetts Regiment, one of the first African-American units to fight for the Union. And he died in battle, and he is now there in Valhalla, one of Magnus' best friends. And he's a great fighter. He will go on the adventure. You'll find out a little bit more about him. Thomas Jefferson Jr. is a great guy. He's a great warrior. He's very strong. He does have this strange thing about wanting to charge up hills. I'm not sure what that's about. It's a Civil War thing, I guess. You'll also find out about Mallory Keene, who's a great fighter. She died, a hero, in the 1970s in Ireland trying to disarm a car bomb. And you'll hear how that happened in the book. Halfborn Gunderson, another one of our friends, he's a berserker. Have you ever heard of berserkers? They are warriors from the Viking days that they would go into this sort of trance. And usually they didn't wear armor. They just had like an ax and that's it. Sometimes they didn't wear anything but just like underpants. That was it. And they would paint themselves different colors, and they would go into this massively weird, frenzied state. You couldn't even talk to them when they were like that. You just sort of point them at the enemy and say, go. And they would charge into battle, and while they were berserking, they felt no pain. They would just charge into battle and kill anybody they saw. <laughs> like that. So if you ever hear the term, you're going berserk, that's where it comes from. You're, you're like a berserker. You're charging into battle. And so you'll find out a little bit more about him. And one of my favorite characters, Alex Fiero. Alex was introduced in the last book. Alex is a great character. Alex is the child of Loki, the evil trickster god. But that doesn't necessarily mean Alex is evil. 
Alex has an interesting past. Alex is gender fluid, which means that on some days, Alex identifies as male. On some days, Alex identifies as female. And if you get it wrong on one day or the other, Alex will let you know about it. And you're just supposed to you know, kind of go with it and, and sort of know what, whether it's sort of a female or a male day for Alex. Anyway, Alex has this ceramics tool. And it's just like a, a wire. And not only can she cut ceramics with it, but she can also sort of fling it and cut the heads off of dragons, you know, her friends, whatever, you know. <laughs> the thing about Alex that was kind of cool is recently, in fact, that book where she, where she was introduced, I'm gonna say she because normally Alex introduces as, as, as female, won the Stonewall Book Award, <laughs> which is really cool. This, if you don't know what that is, it's a, it's a book for, it's a, an award for books that have characters that are lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, that are in the LGBT spectrum. Uh, and you don't see a lot of characters like that in children's books. Alex is, and so I was really honored that uh, because of, of Alex's presence in the book, it got the Stonewall Award. And of course, you'll see Alex again. So, that's enough about Magnus. What else is going on with me? Well, as you heard earlier, I get a lot of questions from people saying, are you ever gonna write about Aztec mythology? What about Chinese mythology? What about Nigerian mythology? What about Native American mythology? And there are so many amazing mythologies out there. But the thing is, a lot of those I didn't grow up with the way I grew up with Egyptian and Norse and Greek and Roman. I know those pretty well. I taught them, I grew up with them. But Brazilian mythology? I mean, I'm sure it's amazing, but I, I don't know anything about it. So I started thinking, instead of me writing all these books, wouldn't it be better to find an author who is from that background, who knows those myths, and who's an expert in the way that I can't be? And instead of me writing the book, finding somebody who wants to write that book, who's from that background, and promote them. And so that's what we're going to do. We have an imprint, which is like just a subsection of Disney publishing called Rick Riordan Presents. And the first book is going to come out very soon. It's coming out in March. It's called Aru Shah and the End of Time. And it's by Roshni Chakshi. And that's her. That's the cover. I have to say, I love Hindu mythology. Uh, I don't know if you know anything about Hindu mythology. They have hundreds of gods. You think Greek mythology is complicated. Whoa. Hindu mythology is amazing. And she does a great job. All these different magic spells and different gods and adventures. And it's a pretty incredible book. It's coming out in March. And then in the fall, we're going to do a book called The Storm Runner by Jennifer Cervantes, which is based on Mayan mythology. And again, if you don't know anything about Mayan mythology, neither did I. But after reading this book, it's pretty amazing. I'm glad I wasn't a Mayan because there's some bloody, bloody stuff that happens. And also a book on Korean mythology called The Dragon Pearl by an author named Yoon Ha Lee that's going to be coming out in the fall. And we're going to try to do four books a year. So if you're interested in other mythologies, hopefully this will give you a look at those. Also, I'm doing another series. Has anybody read The Trials of Apollo? Yeah, oh, good. I'm glad. The, this is about Apollo, the god, and he gets punished by his dad, Zeus. And if you're punished, I don't know what your parents do, if they make you stay in your room or they take away TV or whatever. With Apollo, he's punished by being turned into a human. So I didn't know Zeus could do that, but he strips away Apollo's magic powers, dumps him down into Earth, and he lands in a dumpster in Manhattan. He's a regular 16-year-old kid with no powers, and his name is Lester Papadopoulos. And he has to find his way back to Mount Olympus by doing all these different adventures. So anyway, the third book in that series I'm working on now, it'll be called The Burning Maze. And that comes out May 1st. So stay tuned for that one. The Cain Chronicles, my Egyptian series. We're putting out a new book about the Canes called The Brooklyn House Magician's Guide. So if you're interested in finding out how Egyptians do magic, how they cast spells and charms and curses and all that, and all the different Egyptian gods. This will be here for you. And if you haven't read the Cain Chronicles, this is a good time to pick them up because they're getting a new look. There's a sneak peek at the new jackets that they'll have that are coming out in April. So check those out if you like Egypt. There's also a Magnus Chase coloring book. 
I know, right? I, I, you know, I didn't even think I would like a, they said, I want to do a coloring book. Disney told me this. I'm like, a coloring book? And then I saw the pictures, and they're amazing. I really like them. The Lightning Thief coloring book just came out last month, and it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and this one's coming out next year in August. And if you want to know more, we're just launching a website called readriordan.com. The site has been around, but it's getting a major, major revamp. Some of the stuff is already up, some of it is coming soon, but it will be the official home for demigods. For instance, you can find out more about all the characters. There will be quizzes online. I know a lot of you have asked about this. How do I find out who my godly parent is? There's a quiz for that. So you can get on readwriterton.com and find out what's your magic weapon, who's your godly parent, and all of that, you can decide what sort of demigod you're going to be. And a bunch of stuff about locations that happen in the books, and social media, social art. Uh, anything you want to share, Instagram stuff, Twitter stuff, all that will be there. And let's not forget the boy who started it all, Percy Jackson. What's going on in his world? Some cool stuff has happened recently. In the summer, it was turned into a Broadway musical. Off-Broadway Lightning Thief. Can you imagine Percy dancing and singing? Oh, I kill minotaurs. I don't know. I, I have to admit, I haven't actually seen the play, and that's not because it's not good. It, it's supposed to be really, really funny and really, really good. It's just I have trouble seeing adaptations. It just kind of freaks me out a little bit to see my characters like that. But they did a great job, and if you want to hear Percy sing, the soundtrack is on iTunes. You can check it out. Uh, and they're, they're talking about doing a touring version. So who knows? Hopefully, fingers crossed, it'll come to D.C. one of these days. And next year, there's going to be a special edition of The Lightning Thief coming out, fully illustrated by John Rocco, who did the covers. Every single page, color illustrations, the, the whole book all the way through. This thing is beautiful. And there's the cover. It's just announced yesterday. And here's a little sneak peek inside. I told you not to park there! <laughs> a look at the cabins of Camp Half-Blood. And Kron, the ferryman, taking people across the underworld. Nice. So you can look forward to that in August. So that's just a little look at what's going on. Now it's time to get to my favorite part. We're going to see what you guys are interested in hearing about and do a little Q&A. We're going to get some from our audience, and we have our wonderful helpers here who are going to come out with microphones. Uh, so if you have a question, you can raise your hand. We'll get to as many as we can. And we'll get some from our online uh, viewers as well. Your godly parent to be. Ah, who would I want my godly parent to be? I would, I would hope for Athena. But as I was telling somebody earlier, with my luck, I'd probably get someone like Dionysus. You know. <laughs> my power is I can summon Diet Coke. Hooray. <laughs> All right, question over on this side. Yeah. Hold on. Well, let's get you a microphone there. There you go, sweetheart. Here we go. Here we go. Who is in this book? The one uh, that I'm talking about today? Yes, the new book. The new book, The Ship of the Dead? Well, it is Magnus Chase and some of the other characters uh, that I showed you on the screen, like Alex and Mallory and TJ. You'll also, however, get a little look at Percy Jackson and Annabeth Chase. They make an appearance in the book, too. So if you're wondering what Percy's up to, you can check that out in here, too. Awesome. Okay, right over here. Tell us your name. Um, I'm Lillian. What's your favorite kind of mythology? Ah, thanks, Lillian. My favorite kind of mythology. It's so hard to say. I love them all. I always keep coming back to the Greek myths simply because there's so many of them. There's so much that you can write about. The other myths are great, but we don't have as many myths written down. I wish we did, uh, but we've lost a lot of stories that were never written down. Uh, so I think the Greek, just because we know the most about it. Yeah, and back over here. Um, when did your first Lightning Thief book come out? 
When did the first Lightning Thief book came out? Um, 2005, 2006-ish? 2006, my, my official researcher down here told me, yeah. So it's been just over 10 years. Let's go, Let's go back to the back over here, Rick, to the left. Oh, okay. We'll get right to you. Are you going to write a book about what happened to Leo? What happened to Leo? Actually, um, Leo is a character in the Heroes of Olympus series, and in the Trials of Apollo, you're going to see all of the characters from Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus again. And in the second Trials of Apollo series, you will spend a lot of time with Leo and Calypso. Uh, so yeah, you'll, you'll find out there what's going on with both of them. Yeah. Are you ready? Okay, yeah, go ahead. Thanks for waiting. Um, why isn't... Well, you know Loki's um, son is in your new book. Right. Alex, um, well, I thought he was going to be killed. Like, why is it? I thought Loki's two sons were killed and turned into ah, wolves. Yes, you're very observant. That's right. These are, um, you're just talking about different sons. Loki had a lot of children, and some of them were pretty interesting. One of his kids was Fenris Wolf, this giant wolf. How does a god and a giant have a kid who's a wolf? I have no idea. One of their other children was Jormungand, the world serpent, this huge snake that is so big it wraps all the way around the bottom of the ocean. Again, how do you have a kid who's a snake? I don't know. Uh, but these are just two other kids we were talking about. Great question. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, right here. Tell us your name. Anjali. Um, which mythology do you know most about? Um, I think probably either Norse or Greek. I grew up with both of those and Egyptian, so I, I think I know them. But I, I think I've known the Norse mythology the longest because I was into that when I was like in seventh grade. And like I was talking about earlier, we just have more of the Greek myths. So I know a lot about those as well. Yeah. Okay, right. let's go right down here. Oh. All right. Marcus. Is this you? Is that me? <laughs> that, that's Magnus. This is me without the Magnus hair. Marcus's question was, is the guy on the cover of The Ship of the Dead actually Seal, who's my publicist at Disney? Seal's just being a good sport, and he's dressing up as Magnus for the day. So We, would, we wouldn't want him to go off and fight Fenris Wolf or anything. <laughs> my name is Mary Ann, and which book is your favorite book of all the books that you've written? Oh, Mary Ann, a great question and so hard to answer. Um, I've got so many books. I mean, obviously, The Lightning Thief is really special to me because it was my first children's book, and it's what started it all. I think my favorite Percy Jackson book in the series is actually The Battle of the Labyrinth, the fourth one. I really like the, the battle scene in that. Favorite one of all time? I don't know. I really like the Magnus Chase books, the Viking books. Those, uh, those gods and heroes and monsters are just so weird. I, I really like them. Okay, okay, we're gonna go to the top up there to the right. All right. We actually have a question from one of the schools that's tuning in live on YouTube right now. Fantastic. This is, this is Northwest Rankin Middle School in Flowood, Mississippi. So JC Arrington, who's in seventh grade, wants to know, did you ever write a book that made you almost want to quit? And if so, what was it and why? <laughs> yes, JC, that's called every book. <laughs> No, just because, right, not really, but I mean, writing books is hard. Uh, writing books is a lot of work. And I've, like I said, written what? Like 20 books for kids or something like that, and 30 overall. And I keep thinking it's going to get easier. It doesn't. It doesn't. Every book is hard. Um, a lot of it is revising. Do you guys have to revise in school? Yeah. yeah I know. Do you hate that? Yeah. yeah. Me too. Me too. But here's the thing I found out. It's just part of the deal. No one can write a perfect first draft with no mistakes. It cannot be done. I've written 30 books. I still can't do it. I have to revise every single book three, four, five, six times before I get everything right. So if you're going to write, it's a great thing to do, but you have to be ready. You've got to revise. Part of the process. OK, right. we're going to go to Steph over here on the right. OK, <clears throat> say your name. My name is Sasha. And my question is, what is, was the hardest series to, to make? Like, how long did it take you? Yeah. 
to sure. make the magic Magnus Chase. Yeah, yeah. I think um, probably the hardest one was the Egyptian series, the Cain Chronicles, because we don't know a whole lot about, well, we, we know some, but there's still a lot about the Egyptian gods that we don't know, and we have to sort of guess. I found out a lot of stuff about how Egyptians thought magic worked, though. We have a lot of Egyptian spells that have come down over the thousands of years, and that's kind of interesting. So I went to a lot of museums, I read a lot, and I tried to recreate how a magician from Egypt would have done their magic. It's really pretty fascinating stuff, but it was very hard to research. Cool. Thank okay, you. Good question. back over here to the left, Rick. Yeah. My name is Tallulah, and what's your favorite Greek um, god? Favorite Greek god? Would I surprise you if I said Poseidon? <laughs> I think that's why I made him Percy's dad, because I like the ocean. And I didn't want Percy's dad to be Zeus, the most powerful god, because I just thought that would be too obvious. You know, everybody wants to be Zeus's kid. It's more interesting if he's the second most powerful god. Gives him a little bit more to work for. Tell us your yeah. name. My name is Madison. My question is, what's your motivation for your books? What's my motivation for books? Madison, I think probably my motivation is deadlines. <laughs> I'm kidding, but it's really good to have a deadline. I was talking about that with some of the interviewers before I came out. Do, do you ever, are you like me where you don't really start to do the work until you know it's due? Yeah. I, I do that a lot. And so having a deadline is really good for me. It keeps me motivated. But seriously, the big motivation is you guys. If I know that you're looking for books to read and you're excited and you want to read the next adventure, that's huge motivation for me because I want to make you guys happy. I want to give you guys a book you want to read. So that's great motivation. All right, we're going to go back to Sasha up here in the upper right-hand corner. My name is Lena, and my question is that who's your favorite character in the second book of Magnus in, Chase? In the Magnus Chase series? Um, well, Magnus, of course, I mean, he's the main character, and he's the most like me. He has my sense of humor. We're both kind of cynical, both kind of sarcastic. Uh, but I do, I do like Alex Fierro. Alex is a really interesting character. I've never written anybody quite like Alex before, and it was both a challenge and a treat. Uh, and she's, she's really fun. I like her. Okay, Stephanie over here on the right. <clears throat> um, my name is Suri, and I just wanted to know, what's your all-around favorite god? All-around favorite god among the mythologies? I don't know. I always like Thor. Thor is pretty cool. You wouldn't know it from the way I write about him. I make him like this big sort of oaf who just kind of eats and farts a lot. But I really, I really do think he's a pretty cool god. Uh, so he, he's a, I'd love to have his hammer, too, then. That would be a great weapon. Okay, back up here to the left. <clears throat> Um, who's your favorite character you've ever written? Favorite character I've ever written? I mean, I'm going to have to say Percy Jackson. Every time I write about him, it's like going back and, and seeing an old friend all over again. Uh, I love his voice, and I love his sense of humor. He's a lot of fun. Okay, tell us your name. My name is Jack, and my question is, what's the website for, that, for the quiz? Yeah. What's the website, though? Absolutely, the website, and I don't think the quiz is up yet, but, but oh. if you go there and you bookmark it, it'll be there soon. The website is readriordan.com. Read, R-E-A-D, my last name, R-I-O-R-D-A-N.com. And there's already a bunch of cool stuff, but there's more coming. Yes. It's going to go so, live October 17th. Yeah, October so, 17th. So it's a soft launch up now, but then nice. a hard launch with the full gamut of what the website offers October 17th. Cool. Okay? All right. All right, Sasha, do we have one more school question? Absolutely. So yeah. one of our friends who's tuning in from Brush, Colorado, wants to know. This is from Hunter, age 10. Okay. What do you think the name of your next book will be? Well, I, I know the one that's coming out in the spring. That will be The Burning Maze. That is the third book about the trials of Apollo. Past that, I don't know. What's coming up next for me, the Apollo series is going to be five books. So I've got book four and book five, and I don't know what they're called yet. Usually the title comes to me right about the end of the book I'm writing right now. So stay tuned. And after that, 
I don't know. I don't know. Do you guys have a sense of what you would like to see? What do you like to see? Like more Greek stuff? Or would you like some different mythology? Or I don't know. Maybe, maybe you can tell me what you'd like to see written about. Shout it out. Anybody got any good ideas for another book for Rick? Chinese? How about over Ooh, here? What'd cool. you say? Okay. Nice. We're going to go one more. We have time for one more question right here. What's your name? Zoe. Hey guys, hang on, hang on. Why did you want to become an author? Why did I want to become an author? I, I really like telling stories, and when I was a teacher, that's what I did. Most of the time, I would tell stories in the classroom, and so when I started writing books for kids, it really wasn't that much of a change. I, I already liked doing that. And I have the best job in the world. I get to tell stories and then come out and talk to you guys about them. So it's pretty cool. All right, guys. So let's give it up one more time for your favorite Thank Uncle you, Rick Thank you, everybody. <laughs> this has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.